Hi everyone, welcome to Becky's Crafts and Goodies. Today we are going to make our first arrangement using the flowers from the Artificial Flower Shop in Clandudno. Now if you haven't seen my Shop With Me videos, I'll try and link as many as I can in the description down below. That It's a fantastic shop, it's really, really, really worth paying a visit if you can. If you can't, you could also contact them, you could give them a ring and they do ship items out as well, so just bear that in mind. Now I normally, if you've been with me a while, do lots of things with pinks and creams and that sort of thing that's what this arrangement's going to be but i have also bought some blues and things as well to do other arrangements so this one this first one is going to be a really big statement kind of piece it's massive and the thing that makes it quite big are these now my camera's not even big enough to kind of show you but these are absolutely beautiful they had these on display uh, in the shop and I bought some in the cream as well I don't know if I'll need the cream for this video but I bought three and I think when you're working with flowers it's always good to go for odd numbers for some reason they look they look better so I'm going to use those I'm also going to use this I think this is cherry blossom I've got two sprigs of that I also bought the cream one but the, the cream doesn't actually go with these colours so I'm not going to use that in this display I don't think it's more of a yellowy cream I've also got this bunch here. This was 325. So we'll be breaking that down, breaking the stems down. Oh, incidentally, these were 275 each. I can't remember how much these were, but if you were to call them, they would help you with um, pricing. Then I have these large roses, and I love these. These are one of the favourite things I bought. I absolutely love them. And I like the fact that the leaves are lighter as well, and they look really nice, sort of like... Um, pastely kind of pale colours if you see what I mean I really like that I don't know how much they were because I'm, I'm not sure um, where the receipt is and they've not got the price on but as I said they will help you and this one here was 350 this is a bunch here and it's some really nice creams and it's got some leaves stuck with, with it as well so they're the flowers I think I'm going to use if I need any more I have got some more look if I turn them around you can see they're lovely I have got some more as well, um, but what I'll do is I'll show you the, the vase that I'm going to use. Now, vases can actually be quite expensive if you, you know, if you want to get them. If you look around in shops, they can be a bit pricey. So what I did is had a real look, big nosy, around some charity shops. Now, the craft shop do actually sell some vases, but they were not as big as I wanted because I told you this is going to be a really big one. So... I looked in a charity shop and I actually found this massive jug and this was 3 95 so I haven't prepared it or washed it or anything yet so it's got like some stickers on it I just need to give that a good wash and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it in chalk paint so when you're looking for things don't think oh um you know that's not the right color for what I want or anything like that just look past it look for the shape and look for the size and think you know can I change that because I've got another arrangement that I'm going to be doing and we'll be painting the vase on that as well so just look past what you see and you can pick some really cheap vases up kind of don't scrimp on the flowers but you can sort of buy cheaper pots to put them in and then kind of upcycle them which is absolutely acceptable so this is really big and the reason why I needed it so high is because of these flowers that are going in them and they're going to sort of droop down so it couldn't be anything that was small because this is not going to sort of be able to drip from something that's 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 little so what i'm going to do to start with is to give this a good wash and then we're going to start and paint it in chalk paint and i might even decoupage maybe uh, some flowers or a picture or something on the front as well and that'll just all add to it i've also got some of this which i bought from the shop this is the dry floral i can never say this i always feel like i have to put my teeth in dry floral foam it's actually really hard to say <laughs> um so we'll be using that and i'll be sticking some of that in the bottom of the jug you won't see it but i'll be popping it right in there then we can use that to poke all the flowers in and that will keep it in place and we will stick that down with some glue they also very kindly gave me this hot glue gun this is a belter isn't it and it's only 450 the prices are so competitive and you also get a couple of the glue sticks in there as well so we'll be using that to stick that down and that will hold it all in place but we'll do that once we've painted it now paint wise you can use all sorts of different paints and whatever colors you want so i'm just going on a little walk around the other side of the craft room um i think i'm going to use chalk paint for this and you can also go quite fancy 
with your painting you can distress it you can you know i mean on the channel we've done lots of of different things distressing putting like gold bits on and edgings and all sorts of stuff like that we can actually bring the gold bit back so we can sort of go around the tip with some gold or if you've just started you want it quite basic you can literally just paint it so don't you know don't worry that you have to do something dead fancy you can literally just paint it so i'm going to try and use this vintage with grace paint now it says it's for furniture but we should be okay if it doesn't work we'll just use something else and i'm going to use the belgium lace and the reason i'm using that color is because if i decide to put a napkin over the top the one i've got in mind will work with that so when you're doing decoupage you always have to bear in mind what color you the the base of your napkin is and it needs to kind of blend in really so it doesn't really stick out so first things first for me i'm going to wash this and then we'll start and paint with the chalk paint over the top once once it's obviously dry we'll paint the, the paint over the top right so this is all ready and we're ready to paint it there's no need to prep it other than giving it a wash so you don't have to do anything else and all i'm going to do is just go straight over the top with the chalk paint now it is going to need a good couple of coats because the pattern will probably come through underneath um, but we'll give it a go and we'll see how many coats it needs it's literally just going to be a case of painting it on when it's dry do another coat if it needs another one we'll pop another one over the top and then once we've done that we'll do the next step So here's the vase all painted. I really like how it's come out, actually. I think the colour's lovely. I was actually worried the colour would be too light, but I think it looks really nice. And I've held it against the napkin and it's just the right colour. I ended up giving it three coats just to make it completely covered. And this is the napkin that I'm going to use. So I've got an eBay store and I actually sell napkins on the eBay store. And I'll link that down in the description in case you wanted to have a look. I don't think this particular one's on there. I just got this out of my stash. I think I've got a couple left. But um, yeah, this is what I'm going to use. So what you need to do, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but what you need to do is you need to take out the part of the napkin that you want. And the easiest way to do that is with some water. So I'll just move the vase to one side and... What you do is you get yourself a cup of water you cut out the design that you want i'll probably go for this side even though they are all exactly the same cut out the part that you need this just makes it easier to work with save all this for another day and then i'm just going to move the camera down slightly just so you can see what i'm doing and we need a little brush, just a little brush like this, and some water, just some plain, clean water. And what we're going to do is to get the brush and to go around the edge of the design, pulling out the bits that you actually want to stick on. Now, I've got loads and loads of decoupage tutorials if you wanted to check those out. And if I remember, I'll put the playlist in the description. So you just do this all the way around. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to, in effect, rip the napkin. And if we were to rip it when it was just dry, it would actually basically just rip. So we're going to go around it. Now, this one, we've got a bit of the leaf that's coming off the edge and it hasn't got the full part of the leaf in. So obviously we're not going to get the whole leaf because the whole leaf isn't on the design, but that would be OK. Um, yeah, as I was saying, if you if you just rip it, it'll, it'll just rip without having any water on it. But the water actually softens it. So then what you do is you need to then follow the line that you've gone. So you get your finger and your thumb and you just pull it apart like that. And you're separating the bits off. Just make sure when you get to a bit with the design on that you want, you hold your thumb there. So you don't tear off the bit that you don't want to tear off. And just go all the way around. And it's best to do this before you separate the napkins because most napkins are three ply and you only want the top layer of the napkin. You don't want any, any of the rest and that's the part that we're going to stick on. So I'm just going to go around the rest of this napkin and then we'll stick it on. Right, now what we're going to do is to separate the three layers. So what I normally do is just lick my fingers and... 
it just helps you just put stick them together and it just comes apart so you've got one two three there and all we need is this top part that's the only part that we need so be really careful because it's really flimsy you can work with rice paper and that's generally easier to work with so we just need to bring the vase in now and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand it up and I'm just going to hold it next to it just to give me some kind of idea where to put it because you can get the best idea. Now, because there's a bit of a curve, it might wrinkle slightly, but if it does, that will add to the, to the shabby chic effect, doesn't it? Now, to put them on, it's really simple. What you need is you need some cling film, which I've just completely lost. Um, you can use like one of the, the little pocket things, the punch pockets that you have in folders. And you can reuse that if you want to, um, or you can use cling film. So if you want to use like reusable plasticky things, then you can you can use those. So what I'll do is I'll put this on both sides. I'll put this design on both sides. And I'm going to use, let me show you this the lids off so i've got to be careful this matte finish this is Paul, um, paula's fairy chic emporium i absolutely love it you've seen me use it time after time i've poured some in the lid and so i'm not dipping my brush in there and i'm going to go over where i want the napkin to go but it doesn't matter if you like paint more on because i'm going to be sealing it all anyway so it will make no difference when you put the napkin on, you've got to be careful because it's really thin. You've got to remember you've got one layer. You've not got like the, the three layers on there. So I'm going to try and do this. This is, what can I prop that up with? I'll try and prop it up with that. So I'm not over the top, so I'm hoping I'm going to get it right and nice and, nice and level. So what you do is you put your napkin where you think you want it. And then you start from the middle. Okay. And then you get your cling film and you put that over the top. And what this does is it, it acts as a bit of a barrier because if you're rubbing the napkin with your hands, more than likely it's going to crease or it's going to rip because it is really flimsy. But if you go over it, got a bit of a crease there. If you go over it with your um, with the protective layer of the cling film, then you, you can kind of apply more pressure and it gives you more pressure to work with. I've got a crease in that, but it will be OK. And I'm going to do this on the front and on the back. So it won't matter which way around the, the vase or the jug or whatever you want to call it is. And then you just pull some back like that. And that puts the design on and don't be tempted to go over it too much with the brush because you will rip it and that is proper annoying because I've done that loads of times before so any bits that you've missed get your brush and just go over it really lightly but because of the shape of the vase you are going to get some like wrinkles because it's not dead straight so you can cut it but that's okay so what we're going to do now, it's looking totally different already, isn't it? What we're going to do is we're going to let that dry. It's really important to let it dry before you start messing about with it. Once it's dry, we will put over another layer of the matte finish from um, the Fairy Chic Emporium. And I'm also going to do exactly the same on that side. So whichever way you look at it, you'll be able to kind of, you know, see the design. So I'll do that and then I'll be back with you. Right, so I've put the napkin on both sides and all I'm going to do now is to go over it with some of this matte finish and I'll probably give it a couple of coats over the top. Just make sure your napkin is dry before you go over it and that will basically seal the napkin in, seal the chalk paint and it will stop things getting scratched, the paint coming off and things like that. Right, so it's the next day now. I've given it plenty of time to dry and I did actually think this morning, just when I woke up, of another little idea that you could do. The craft shops do actually sell some, well, the ones in Flandre do actually sell some modelling clay. Now, I've got the Das clay. They don't sell this one, but they do sell a terracotta one and a white one, which is 550 if I remember from um, my visit. And what you can actually do is you can use the clay 
to make like some mouldings and I've just got this mould here this is the redesigned one I've used this quite a few times this is regal trimmings I think I bought mine from Etsy um but it is one of the older ones so any kind of mould that you can find that does like a trim would work absolutely fine um so you could just put the modeling clay into the molds and maybe put add an extra trim to it so all you would need to do is put it in the mold before it sets just well take it out don't leave it to set while it's still wet get some trade grade pva and put that on the back of the mold and then wherever you want to put it stick it on while it's still wet so obviously with gravity you probably have to just lean it to one side um let that dry while it's sitting on the piece because what it will do is it will then mold to the area that you're sticking it to because it's still wet and then you can just paint it over the top so that would be great you could also maybe distress it with some things um if you had maybe a different color underneath you could do like a wet distress where you could rub it with just a wipe or something like that and then you would get some extra detail that would kind of pull out and it would look different you could also use some um distress kind of products so i've got the um the gold distress here this is the fairy chic gold what's it can't think what it's called and they also do a silver one as well so you could just maybe go over with that and then just seal it you could also use there is another product that i've got on my shelf which i'm just looking for which i've just found it is called rub and buff and it's antique gold so again if you wanted to get the gold trim you could put that around the edge and distress a few things so there are things that you can do with it you could maybe give it another crackle kind of effect but i wanted it to be like this and i'm going to leave it like this but i just wanted to also give you a couple of other ideas of things that you can do as well right so now we're going to build up the actual display itself so i'm going to use this dry floral foam i did well there didn't i and this i don't know about you but this really sets my teeth on edge when i cut it so if you don't like this bit, just fast forward it. So I'm just going to cut it open. And what I'm going to do is just cut it with a knife. Roughly measure it. Because um, obviously we've got to get it inside there. So roughly measure the gap. I'm probably going to cut it about in half. Oh, this is the bit I don't like. right what i've done is i've just cut the corners off just so it'll go down obviously because of the shape of it it's larger at the bottom but we've obviously got to get it through the neck part um, and what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick one block on top of the other and that's because we want to get some height in the flowers now some of these flowers are naturally really short so if i put that in there look what happens you can't see it at all so giving the height with the extra blocks will not only bring it up um, but what we can do as well is we can extend some of the actual stems as well. So that's the original stem once I've cut it down. But what I've done with this one is I've found some bits that are left over on some of the roses. They're too long. So I cut some extra bits off the stems and I just got the floral tape and I literally just bound them together. And you're not going to see that part, but that just gives us extra height. So if I put that down to the bottom, you can see it's higher. But once we've got the two blocks on the top, it's going to bring it up to where we need it. And then if we just need to cut some extra bits off to make it the right sort of height, then we can do that. But it's just bringing everything up because the vase is quite high, quite tall. We need to obviously make sure we can see all the flowers that are going in the arrangement. So I'm just going to cut this other one now. I'll pause the video so I don't put you through it. Um, and then we'll start and glue them inside. Right, so I've got my new hefty glue gun here. And I'm going to glue the bottom of the, what's it? So just squirt it all. I'm a little bit out of shot here. I need to get some more of this glue actually so i've just put a splodge on there as you can see and then that is going to go straight very carefully through the top bit into it this might make you cringe so block your ears and then i'm going to stick that on the bottom okay so that's sticking now straight on the bottom so you can test your levels that would kind of be okay i think that would be because what i'm going to do is i'm going to push them into it so if I test this bit, because what you can do is you don't, you can cut like an extra bit off if you don't need it to be as high. That's about there. 
thinking that might be a bit too high but it's all kind of trial and error and don't forget you can push them in further but i might cut a little bit off that i'm just going to shave like a bit off the bottom and then we'll glue that right so then we'll stick this extra bit on the top put that down and just push that into place and that will dry into place and you won't see all that in there when the arrangement's on so you don't need to worry about that so now we're going to look at the actual flowers themselves now i was telling you before about these and what I would recommend, these leaves here, they do actually come up and down. So I would pop maybe a dab of hot glue, just a tiny bit on there, just to hold it so the leaves stay up like that. And I'll do that to all of them, just to make sure, just be really careful, just hold it up there for a second, and then that will sort of hold it all in place. So to start and build the flowers, um, what I'm probably going to do is to put the big white ones in first, because they're quite tall. So I'll use those as kind of a bit of a guide. So all I'm going to do is just use these little snips here to snip off some. I'm going to sort of air on the side of caution and I'll probably cut them at different lengths as well. And these are the bits that I'm going to use to extend the other roses. So I'll use the florist tape and I'll tape that to that. And that gives us the extra height that we need. So don't throw these bits away. And what I'll do is I'll pop this in. And I'll kind of use that as a bit of a height guide, really. I think I need to lift this up so you can see a bit more. Look, it's really tall, isn't it? And we've also got these. So I just want to see how these fall. Now, one of these is slightly smaller. It doesn't come round quite as much. So I'll probably use that one at the front. Um, but it's going to be a case of just popping them in and seeing where they look where they look the best so that one can go at the front push it all the way down and and then we'll kind of that's right in your shot look you can't see now and then we'll move up now I'll warn you it is going to be a really big display so it's not going to be like something small that you can have on a little table it is going to be a big big statement piece we've got another one coming up actually with blues and things but um I'm just taking the tag off there that we'll be doing so if you want anything smaller then you, you know keep an eye out for that but it is going to be a big one right so Put this next one in the side here and that's that come down and then i'll just turn it round and i'll put one in here now if you wanted it so it was the same all the way around just kind of do it like that so they all go in each corner if you see what i mean even though there isn't a corner and something round you know where i'm, where I'm coming from so, and what you can do, if you find these bits here are too long, you can always snip them off. I'll try and pull that back a bit for you so you can actually see what I'm doing. I know this one's quite big at the front. Um, and then what we're going to do is put some more of these roses in. But everything will be padded out so, you know, that it won't be sort of gappy, if you see what I mean. Just hoping you can see enough because it is just really big. I'll try and tilt the camera a little bit. Now, I don't know how tall I'm going to need these, so I haven't cut anything off this at the moment. And I'm just going to test it. I think a tiny bit, but not too much, because I want these to be quite high. So I'll put two of these in there. Right, so I'll pop the other one on the other side. Do that so that's around about the same height and then we'll put the the roses in again height wise we're just sort of testing because i'm not 100 percent sure i might take a bit off that one so it's a case of just putting them in and just seeing right so what i'm going to do now is to put some of these other flowers in but 
I've run out of wire and sort of sticky bits that I can stick them to. So I found these kebab skewers in the kitchen and they'll be perfect. So all I'm going to do is just cut this top part off here. And at the bottom, they've got a nice bit that will help me stick it in. I'm just going to hold it together like that and go around with some florist tape. And basically that's green, so it'll cover it all in. It'll cover the whole of this stick in and you won't see it at all. But it will give me the height that I need to be able to pop the rest in the display. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing to these just to make these stems higher as well. So I've done all of these stems. I've made them kind of different sizes and it just took me about 15 minutes to do all these, just sort of twizzle them round. And I also made a couple of these just in case we wanted to put those in. So what I'm going to do to start with is to put the white ones in and I'm literally just going to poke them in the arrangement just where I think they'll go and if they need to be different sizes you can always cut a part off that'll be absolutely fine And then all you need to do is just kind of primp it up, move the flowers into the place that you want them to go. And then that's it completely finished. So I really like that. I'm going to try and put it on my dining room table, but I'm not sure if it's going to be too big, but I'm going to put it there anyway. But I hope I've inspired you to have a go and I hope I've taught you something new as well and just not to be afraid of having a go at, at doing it really. So that's it for me. Again, check out the description and all the links in there and I will see you all again soon. You take care. Bye for now.